hi there back again to share another recipe with you today i'm sharing a recipe for a gluten-free minced beef pie um, i'm showing you exactly how i go about making it sometimes um, when i'm going to make well when i'm going to share something with you i look at recipes of how other people do it and then sort of work off that but that's not always traditionally how i make things so i thought today i'll just show you um, how I go about making a mince pea pie in case it may inspire you to give one a go too. Okay, so first up in the pan, I've got some minced beef. Um, there's about 500 grams there or a pound, however you want to work. And I'm just going to add some chopped onions to that first. And what I do as well, I put in some grated carrots. So I do grate it because they break down but it just gives a mince, I think, a little bit more flavour when you're making a pie um, or, you know, a casserole or whatever. So, and then I'm going to add some finely chopped celery there and I'm going to pop that in there as well. Okay, so I'm just going to pop this onto the heat now so the meat can brown. So I just brown the mince off on a medium heat and just keep stirring around so it just breaks the mince down as it cooks. I mean, once it sort of colours a little bit, I can stop doing that and then just keep coming back and giving it a little stir. Um, but until it sort of starts cooking through or browning, um, I like to just keep giving it a little stir around. When cooking mince like this, it's really good as well if you make more than what you need because you can just use the bit that you need for the pie um, once the mixture's cooled down a little bit. And then the rest can then be um, frozen, so it can be decanted into the size you needed, uh, need, sorry, labelled and then popped into the freezer. And it comes in so handy because this base, mince base, can also be used things like cottage pies and um, sort of individual little pies if you want to do that as well, or little pasties with, with gluten-free cut pastry. So it's really handy to do a job lot. Today, just um, so I could get on and show the video, I've just done um, a usual now, but I think I will have more over. I don't think I'm gonna need all this meat in here that I've cooked out or I'm cooking out for the pie. Okay, so I'll leave that for a moment and then just keep coming back and giving it a little stir. So once, once the mince is browned, or well sealed really, it's not that brown because, because I've added the veg and things before, um, it doesn't tend to really brown the mince. But if you want to get a darker mince, what you could do is brown the mince first and then add in the vegetables afterwards um, rather than adding it in together. But I just do it like this because it makes life easier. So that's what it looks like now. And then to that, I'm just going to crumble in a North Stock cube. And the North Stock cubes um, in the UK are gluten free, but just double check on the packs to make sure that they're okay. I'm just going to crumble that in. And then to that, I'm just going to add also a little bit of white pepper. Um, any pepper will do, providing it's uh, suitable for a gluten free diet. I sometimes use my cracked pepper, but I'm just going to put that in today. Um, I may add a bit more crack pepper later on. Okay, I'm just going to stir that around for a minute because I think adding the stock cube in then I sort of feel like it gets into the, the meat, the, sorry, the flavour gets into the meat a little bit more by adding the stock cube at that point. So just cook that out for about another minute, two minutes more. Okay, so once the uh, stock cube's dissolved in there and it's sort of coated the meat, and it's been on there for a minute, so I just add some boiling water. That's just boiling water from the kettle. And I'm just gonna put enough in, not so it's too much. Um, let's see, I might need to add a drop more. That's about right. Okay, so that's what I've added in there. So I'm gonna bring it up to a boil and then juice it to a simmer and then pop a lid on and leave it for about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Okay, so the mince has been simmering away now for about 25 minutes and that's what it looks like. There's not a lot of liquid in there, but there's enough. So I'm just gonna add in. So what I'm using is that. So it's Bisto, um, the gluten-free Bisto gravy 
granules. So say it's a gluten-free one marked up um, from the free from aisle. And I'm just gonna sprinkle this in until I get the right consistency that I want. Okay, so I'm happy with how that is now. I'm just gonna do a quick taste test to make sure it's seasoned and everything and then add some salt and pepper if need be. And then I'm gonna cover the pan and leave it out just to cool for about an hour. You can, what you can do is make this in advance. Um, leave it to cool for about an hour and then pop it into the fridge. So you could make it up to sort of two days before you need it. Um, and also as well, you can make it and then allow it to cool and then freeze it. That's another option as well. I mean, as I say, it's really handy having um, um, sort of portions of this mince in the freezer to pop together either a pie or a cottage pie or some little pasties. So it's just great. So as I say, leave this cool and then I'll pop the pie together. Okay, so I'm back now, Ashley, in the mince cool down for about an hour, just um, outside the fridge. Ideally, I'd have let it cool completely. So I've let it cool for the hour, as I mentioned before, and then put it into the fridge to chill completely. But I wanted to crack on and show you the finished pie. And if I did that, I might not get around to doing it. So I wanted just to get on. So it's cool enough now that I can use it with the pastry. So I've already made the pastry. Um, the pastry is as per the very first video that I shared with you and the link for the, the actual recipe is within that pastry video. Um, so it's just short crust pastry, gluten free short crust pastry, nothing's changed with how I make it from when I uh, showed it. So I've got ahead and just done that. So I just did that about a minute or so before I turn the camera back on. So I'm just going to go more or less half with that because I'll need a slightly bigger piece for the bottom. Um, and now I'm just going to roll this out and fill the pie. Don't worry um, if it's a little bit rough and ready, it's absolutely fine. Um, but with the pastry, as I mentioned before, um, a little something there, I'm not sure what that is. Um, as I've mentioned before, um, you don't want to chill it. Um, you just want to make it and crack on and use it straight away because the longer you leave it, it has a tendency to dry out the gluten-free pastry. So just get on and work with it straight away. Um, plenty of flour on the, um, the, the worktop and then just underneath it as well. And then just roll it out as evenly as possible. But don't worry too much. We don't, it doesn't matter. It's not, the pie, it's quite nice to be rustic. So I'm gonna go, so I've just, Greased um, that with a little bit of low fat spreadable butter um, and that's just ready to line now. I like to grease it because I think sort of the pastry slips in that a little bit easier as well. So just gently fold that in, not fold that in, <laughs> unroll it from the rolling pin in. Okay. And just ease it into place. It's gonna be a bit of a patchwork, but it doesn't matter at all it'll still be really tasty. So let's just patch it up. Use those bits just to patch it up around the side. And a bit more there. What I didn't want to do was overstretch it. So there's bits that feel like it's a bit overstretched then just let that go in. Okay, so that's that already there. I'm not gonna trim it off. What I'm gonna do now is, and I'll put that other little bit in there that just gives me a bit more, actually I've just broke a few bits off from around the side as well, <laughs> just to make sure I've got plenty of pastry. Um, so I'm gonna roll the top out now. Um, I'm doing that more because if the pie filling was really cold, I'd have put that in straight away now, but because it, it's not as cold as ideally I'd like it to be. I'm just gonna work more quickly um, with the pastry so I can get it in and the oven's preheated as well. Don't know what <laughs> Keep some little bits in the pastry. And with this, I want quite a nice thick crust. So um, I'll try and keep it so it's as near to the size as possible without having too much overlap here.
obviously while it's big enough as well. That should do it, I reckon. Right, okay, so I'm just gonna fill the pie now. amount of this. This is going to be a nice deep pie now. So just to make sure it sticks, I'm just going to dab a little bit of water around the edge. And now I'm just going to pop the lid on. There we go. When I mean, pastry doesn't always play, it's like ordinary baking, you get good and bad days. Um, today it's been a good day, um, but yeah, there we go. Okay, so just press that into place and then I'm just gonna trim around with the knife now. So say I'm working quickly because, as I mentioned before, the mince is a little bit warmer than what I want it to be. And it is it works so much better at high when you do have cold um cold filling and then just bake it then okay I'm just dipping and doing this just to squish the the two um pieces together make it look a little bit pretty okay and then just a couple of uh slits and then I'm just going to brush the top with egg wash. It just gives it, I think, with a pie like this, like a nice shiny top when it comes out of the oven. And the oven's preheating now, I want it to go into a hot oven. I won't faff too much because I want that to get in there and bake. So I'm going to pop that in now for about 25 minutes, half an hour, and I'll show you what it looks like when it's cooked or when it's baked. With that little bit of pastry left now, I'm just going to actually line that uh, little flan dish and that then can go in the freezer and I can use that at a later date. Again, it doesn't matter if it's a bit rough and ready, it will do the job. ready tart but that can go in the freezer I'll put it in a freezer bag um, and I can use it then I say at a later date okay so there we go that is the finished pie all baked now and um, it baked for about half an hour in the oven I just did it till it was the filling was piping hot I could hear it bubbling when I took it from the oven and um, that will be ready to cut in about 10 minutes or so It'll just allow it to settle down of course, I've done a really deep pie today, but you can go a thinner pie if you want. If you just want to do like a plate pie, that would work. The filling will also work if you want to do little tiny pies in like a muffin tin, that would also be great as well. But as I said, you know, any questions, then always do give me a shout. Okay, so thank you so much for watching my video sharing um, how I make a gluten-free minced beef pie. Um, I do appreciate you tuning into my channel and I really love sharing recipes with you. Hopefully we'll be back soon to share some more, but in the meantime, take care and bye for now.